Hello everyone, this is Gaim and welcome back to another episode of Fun Day Sunday and this episode we are going to be talking about the ranked battle season and this time I'm going to be taking a look at the destroyers. I went ahead and decided to go with the Shinonome. Uh, it's a fairly good ship, it's very similar to Fubuki so if you like the and enjoy playing the Fubuki, uh, this is actually a really good ship, and the good reason why this is a good ship is look at the matchmaking. For the most part, you see a lot of battleships. We have an Arizona, a Bayern, two Fusos, a Cleveland, Leander, and a Shinonome on our team. On the enemy team, there is two New Mexicos, a Bayern, a Mutsu, Cleveland, a Molotov, and a Gade. Uh, so, uh, being a destroyer, being a torpedo boat is really good because rank battle, you see a lot of battleships. Uh, not saying that's always going to be the case, but for the most part, it's pretty good. Now, the Shinonobi is a little bit different than the Fubuki. Uh, has the same detection, uh, has very similar guns, uh, similar speed, but there's quite a few differences. The Shinonobi has an additional, additional gun, as well as... 8 range kilometer torpedoes versus 6, which the Fubuki can get. So, Shinonomi is definitely a little bit better. And just to point this out right now, my Shimakaze captain is actually currently on my Shinonomi while I'm doing ranked battles. And so our team decided to push into A. Uh, there is a enemy Gade, which I don't overly recommend. The Gade does have the potential of getting 150 millimeter guns. But her detection and uh, her reload on her torpedoes kind of hamper her else, as well as her short duration on smoke. I mean, the benefit of the gate is the additional health, as well as also uh, invisifying. But as you can see, we automatically detected the gate. Uh, we have at least 0.5. Gonna go ahead and drop some torpedoes uh, in his range. Now, the gate does have hydroacoustics. And that could prove beneficial, especially if you need to push in towards a smoke. Uh, you can use that to your advantage. But right now, I'm just going to kind of pull away. I am finally detected at the moment. It looks like the enemy team is pushing into A. Um, hoping to get a possible torpedo hit. But it looks like he slowed up a little bit too soon. Uh, may have had his hydro up. Especially since he knew there was a destroyer uh, just off his starboard bow. Now, probably the ships I would recommend is either the Shinonoma or the Fibuki. If you, especially if you enjoy playing as a torpedo bow, and especially since you do see a lot of battleships, or go with either the Farragut or the Anshan. Or possibly even the Gnevni. Now, the Fergit and the Anshan are basically gunboats. Uh, their torpedoes are fairly bad. The benefit of the Fergit is her smokes last a very long time. She's fairly stealthy. Uh, she doesn't have as much hit health points as her lower tier uh, sister ship, the Nicholas. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, the enemy gate is going to capture a... Uh, do have to be weary of any potential hydroacoustics. Trying to see where he might be. Gonna go ahead and drop another spread. Now the torpedo reload rate is very quick. Uh, once again, uh, due to the fact that my uh, Shimakaze captain is actually currently on this. So it gets it down to 1 minute and 5 seconds. So overall not too bad. The gate is in a very terrible, terrible position. Uh, he has currently a Leander currently focusing on him. And he's going to try to pull away. Now I'm going to try to actually push into A. As you can see the enemy battleships aren't really committing that much um they are kind of sticking further back we did take out their uh cleveland which is actually a really good thing because the cleveland is probably one of the better cruisers not one of the one of probably probably a class cruiser as far as uh the uh cruisers are concerned on tier six uh so Good thing we got rid of him. Now we can focus on these enemy battleships. Now at the moment they are sitting further back. I have to be weary of this gate. Do not want to be caught in a very compromising position uh, where I cannot really defend myself. Because the Shinonome does have three turrets, six guns total. Uh, but the reload rate is quite terrible. Now here's another downside of the fact that the... Of the Shinonomi is that she has no defensive AA. There's one gun. So 
if there is a enemy carrier and the enemy carrier decides to focus you, you there's really no way you can defend yourself although at this tier uh destroyers are very much at the uh, mercy of any enemy carrier that decides to go after them now i have laid down smoke hoping to at least assist my friendly battleships hopefully they'll actually start to push up uh it looks like the enemy battleships are starting to push towards b and this is where the fun begins. So once again, the Shinonome has 65 knot torpedoes, uh, eight kilometer range, and the reload rate, once you have torpedo armament expertise on, uh, gets it down to around a minute and five seconds. So pretty decent, all considering. Uh, so just keeping my distance, have to be at least aware that there's a possibility of a gade. Should be able to detect a gade fairly quickly. Um, not likely he's going to catch me by too much surprise unless he does come around behind an island. So right now we are playing very, very passively. And this is kind of how you have to play rank. You have to play more tactfully. Um, not saying in random battles you should never play with tactics. But here you do have to be very aware of your positioning and the enemy positioning. Because one simple mistake can cost you your ship as well as the when. As you can see, this Cleveland's actually using this island, or at least trying to use this island, uh, for his benefit, but I believe he's a little bit too close and is currently just shelling the island uh, for the most part, but some are making it through. Now, it looks like we do have a enemy in New Mexico that is pushing towards the B-Cap. We do have a friendly Leander, and that's actually a really good cruiser right there. Some cruiser that I would recommend as far as playing uh, rank battles. So, uh, looks like the enemy team is starting to push up, and I honestly haven't done that much in this battle. I've only currently captured one base, and that's actually about it. I haven't even landed a torpedo or a hit, but it looks like the enemy team is starting to commit towards B. A is fairly well secured. Uh, I believe we have a enemy Mutsu pushing up by himself against a Arizona and a Fuso. Uh, drop torps off against this enemy New Mexico over here. And going to go ahead and pull away. So very similar, um, very smart idea as far as playing a IGN destroyer. And we are detected and there is the enemy gade uh, popping up. Actually did catch us by surprise. He came around that island. And right now all I'm going to do is try to get myself some distance. Because honestly, I really don't want to feel the power of that Molotov. But fortunately for me, the Molotov is currently focused on someone else. Now, it looks like that New Mexico sped up just a bit. Only 8-2 instead of the total. And probably, yes, I know, probably should have spread those out a little bit more. But I was hoping uh, that this New Mexico captain was not paying that much attention. But it looks like he was. So, well, at least we got two torpedo hits. That's probably going to cause him to burn his damage control. Since he did get a flooding on that. But our torpedoes are already back up. Uh, next target is that Bayern. He is around eight kilometers out, so I do have to get in a little bit closer, uh, to actually land any possible torpedoes. Uh, this island's kind of hampering my drop. But, for the most part, if, if, especially if you're playing a battleship, if you play this correctly, you will, uh, be fine. Um, just be aware of where the possible destroyers are. And he should be alright, but it looks like he's actually starting to pull out. So that's going to throw off the drop on the torpedoes even more, which is unfortunate. Now our Leander has uh, ran into the enemy gade and is trying his very best. He's actually currently reversing out as quickly as possible. Now, the probably, yeah, probably the one destroyer I don't recommend is the gade. Um really just comes down to the fact of her, her very slow reload rate on her guns, especially once you get the 150. Yes, they are powerful, uh, but for the most part, whenever I played the Gade, uh, the accuracy on the guns was somewhat terrible. Um, sometimes they go every which way. Um, at least that's what I experienced. So, another drop is ready to go on this Bayern. Uh, and this is going to be a good drop. It's gonna be a really good drop so gonna go ahead and position myself somewhere else 
Our team's doing really well. We have taken out two of their ships versus one. We have lost our Fuso, which is unfortunate. Or at least one of our Fusos. And that is unfortunate. So, as far as what possible destroyers you can go, I would say IGN or USN destroyers would be the better choices. Uh, Anshan uh, has some negative... Uh, Negative things about her as well. And ooh, look at that. <laughs> Three torpedo hits on the Baron. Uh, cause the flooding. Looks like he does repair it. But we do get the Gade. Which is very, very nice. Very nice. Now the guns on the Shinonome and even the Fubuki are quite lousy. They're good arcing shells. You can see that dispersion. Very, very tight. Uh, and they hit pretty hard. But the reload rate is abysmal it is only around uh nine seconds on the reload rate so quite abysmal now the enemy team is starting to push up north a bit and th th i will have to say i like this map i like this map I just kind of wish i see it a little bit more than i do um but don't get to see it that often it's a good map it's a nice tight quarters map especially these inner islands um but here i'm gonna go ahead and drop smoke uh try to help out my cleveland and my leander just in case uh any destroyer or battleship decides to focus them but fortunately i think actually they should be safe uh for the most part but Honestly, I don't think this team is enemy team is going to win uh, due to the fact that they have lost half over half of their team right now and is currently sitting at 280 versus 814. Uh, but fortunately for uh, the Cleveland, the smoke is actually going to assist him uh, on focusing this Molotov. Now, we do know that the Bayern and the New Mexico on the enemy team is currently sitting over at B. Thinking about seeing if I can get a torp drop on him. Yep. Probably should. The Molotov has just gone down. All that's left on the enemy team is the Bayern and the New Mexico. And I don't really foresee them from pulling away. And this, once again, coming back to how ranked battles should be played. It should be played a little bit more carefully and working more together as a team uh, more so than a random battle even though rank battle is still semi-random uh, generally you will get players uh, from different levels of uh, the I guess the ranks different ranks uh, but usually within that range that you are in uh, so for the most part it's fairly random on who you'll get sometimes you'll get amazing players sometimes you will not and that can be still very, very annoying. Uh, you can s still sometimes feel like it is a random battle. Um, but overall, if you are going to do destroyers, uh, just play more uh, for the team. Especially if you have two destroyers, uh, you can uh, get around on the side and possibly drop some torps, especially IGN. It does a really fantastic job, uh, but I think we are going to actually win this battle here in just a moment. Uh, the Baron is pushing out, and he's very, very low on health, and we are almost at a 1,000 points there. So this is actually going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you like what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button. You guys have a great and fantastic day. Zai Jen.